it's just um, us taking what we do in a prayer room and we just moved it out here. All the leadership, the elders, pastor. We uh, try to be faithful and get obedient to what Lord Jesus Christ told us that before anyone who shares the word, they get prayed over. Amen? Amen. And the reason why they get prayed over is that it's for protection. Woo. Thank you, God. You know, because remember, guys, we don't go through anybody. We only go through Lord Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. And so I just wanted to uh, ask God for prayer over your, your leadership team, over your elders, your deacons. Um, if you're planning here at Open Arms Community Church and you don't know who your deacons are, please get with uh, Trish and uh, she'll, she'll make sure that you have a deacon. Praise God. Um, all the children may be excused. Sister Rocky's back there. Praise God. Um, Sister Amanda's back there. So we know that you guys are going to be taken care of. Blessed. Hallelujah. Um, it's not about the gifts under the tree. Christmas is all about the perfect gift from God nailed to the tree. Amen. Merry Christmas. Amen. Hallelujah. So our worship service this evening, this is how cool Holy Spirit is, Brother Ken. It's seven days till Christmas. The title of this worship service is Seven Graces of Christmas. Por favor. <laughs> Say it with me, Mas. Por favor. If y'all don't know Spanish, that means more, please. Right? More Christ, please. Hallelujah. More Christ. Say it with me. More Christ. More Christ. You know, I, I, I'm going to start something this next year. And Pastor, I need you to hold me accountable. But how awesome would it be, Brother Lance, if we made Christmas, that entire Christmas, no gifts, all we're going to do is talk about Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. I'm being serious. What if you implemented that in your family? What if you told your family, no gifts this Christmas? What we're going to do is we're going to come together, and every day we're going to just worship Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Because it is all about Christ, ain't it? Listen, I'm just getting so sick and tired of how the devil, this world, just spits on Christmas. We have all these families right now in anxiety and worry, fighting. I, I, listen, I've counseled three marriages this week, and they're at each other. Why? Because they don't have enough money. Why? To buy presents. Are you kidding me? We need to get a reality check, church. Amen. Seriously, we need a reality check. Amen? Amen? You know, if we raise these, chi these children thinking that Christmas is just this holiday that you're going to go get something and get spoiled, it's up to you now to put your house in order. Come on. I'm not going to be a pastor of a church that's going to spit on Christmas. Are you kidding me? Come on. I'm not. Christmas is all about Christ. Amen. Amen. Listen, I, I, listen I, I'm not attacking nobody. I'm just telling you. I can see what's happening. Amen. I can see what's happening. You know, we had to do some hospital visitations yesterday. And I encourage any one of y'all, if you think that you're down and out and I can't afford this and I can't buy this, go visit somebody in the hospital. Oh, are we talking real now? Go visit somebody in the hospital. Then when you get out of the hospital, let me hear you complain and talk about, oh, I can't buy this or I wanted this. Are you serious? You know, it's funny, moments like this, I feel like the grown-up, and I don't like it. You guys know me. I don't like it. But it's up to us. Hallelujah. Amen. Say it with me. It's up to me Amen. to put the meaning of Christmas back into Christmas. Hallelujah. Amen. And it's all about Jesus. It's all about Jesus. Yeah. Hallelujah. Listen. Family. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. Put these children in order. My gosh, I've been in stores where, I mean, I'm talking about, praise God for our youth group. I love them. I'm not saying they're all saints. I'm not. Some of you are laughing because some of your kids are there. I mean, I'm not saying they're all saints, but praise God, they're here on a Wednesday, right? Amen. Packing gifts for homeless children. Amen? Amen? Come on now. That's powerful now, right? That's powerful that they can be a part of a blessing, putting stuff in a bag, going, oh my gosh, I take this for granted. A blanket? Come on. I take slippers for granted. Amen? Come on. So will you, will, you, will you help me? Seriously, will you help me? It's amazing. There's just, everybody right now is just going crazy. Yeah. I mean, really, everybody, Brother Kevin, everybody is going, 
And it's like, wait a minute, what is, what's the meaning of Christmas? Come on, that's right. I forget that. Right? And, and God has charged us because Christ lives in us, right? Yeah. Where does Christ live in your life? Yeah. Amen? And Holy Spirit in you say, let his light shine. Amen? Yeah. Let his light shine. How do you let his light shine? You just let people know. You know, if, if you got family, maybe it's you. Yeah. Huh? Right? Maybe it's you sitting here tonight, crunchy. What is wrong with you? You are not going to hell. Eternally beloved, hallelujah. He overstored. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Jesus. See, this goes so far deeper than just a message or preaching. This goes, far, this goes way deeper. This, this, you can feel it. You can feel it in the temple. You can feel the Holy Spirit wanting to bless you. Listen, we got to get right. Yep. Amen. Amen. We got to get right. The enemy doesn't have any power over you. Yeah. Amen. 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 Yes, half the room said amen, so the other half believes that the enemy has power. No. I'm going to say it again. The enemy has no power over you. Amen. And it's all because of this one man. Amen. His name is Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. So, Sister Amy, what this tells me is that as a church, one body in Christ, Amen. Holy Spirit alive. Take a breath with me. Some of you right now go, I don't, I don't understand, Pastor. I took a breath and it feels like this is the first breath I've taken in, in a month. It's because Holy Spirit. Amen. That's nothing to do with your pastor. Open arms. It's all Jesus. Amen. Amen. We got a lot to cover tonight. <laughs> so I need your help. I need prayer. Amen. We got a lot to cover. By the grace of God, God wants to go over the seven graces of Christ, Mas, or Favor. And I just love that wordplay, right? I'm all about more Christ. Are you? Yeah. I'm all about more Christ. Are you? Yeah. Right? And so when we talk about the seven graces of Christ, we're going to go into a lot. I'm going to show you here in this next screen. Look at all the books we're going to go over. <laughs> Yeah. And believe it or not, this is, this is a devotional that I had today with the Lord. And as we were, you know, you guys, many of you do it, as you're in your prayer room, as you're just on your face, as you're crying, it's okay to cry out to God. Amen. Man, you need to know this. One of the most powerful things you can do as a man is cry. Amen. You know why? Because the world tells you, don't cry, he's a tough guy. That's lies. Amen, beloved daughter. That's lies. Be who you are. Amen. Many of you are writing it down, and I appreciate that. Now, I am going to tell you, because I've been asking God, I thought that this was going to launch out next year. You ever have that, Pastor, in your devotional? And you're like, okay, God, this is where the church is headed and all that stuff. Then at the end of writing all these scriptures down and going through reading, God says, nope, that's for tonight. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Um, but Lord, I got a 45 minute time limit. And then God says, so you're giving me a time limit? Oh, come on, man. Come on, man. And I said, no, I would never do that. Come on. I'd rather get fired. Really, I'd rather get fired from Open Arms Community Church than, than be disobedient to God. I'm really. Because guess what? You fire me, I'm still going to do the same thing I do every day. Worship my Lord Jesus. Amen. And be obedient to what the Holy Spirit wants me to do. Hallelujah. I pray that's the same for you. Lord Jesus Christ defines me. Who, does, who defines you? Holy Spirit. Huh? Is it your job? No. Is it, is it your children? No. Is it your wife? No. Husband? No. Uh, is it your church? No. Who defines you? Hallelujah. I am who says I am. Amen. Hallelujah. Great I am says it. So let's get into this. Praise God. Romans 12, 6 through 8. We have different gifts according to the grace given to each of us. If your gift is prophesying, then prophesy. In accordance with Lord Jesus Christ. Say with me, Lord Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ. Who's your faith? Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Who is your faith? Lord Jesus Christ. See, by the grace of God, what God did right there is life changing for those of you who've been through a season of struggle. How many of you have been through a season of struggle? If I, if I could just lift up all, I would, right? And when you go through a season of struggle, the enemy wants you, right, to depend on your faith. But the glory of God is when you know my faith 
is not a matter of what I can do, it's what he has done. Amen? Hallelujah. It's what he has done. Hallelujah. Which means, which means everything's done and perfect. Well, Brother Joe, you just don't know what I'm going through. You're right, I know. But I know he's been through it. Oh, Brother Joe, you just don't know. This, this, this is bothering you. Whatever it is, it may be sickness, it may be a relationship, it may be a child. Guess what? God says, I've been there. I've got this. Amen? I've been there. Say with me, God got this. Hallelujah. Let's go. If, it, if it's serving, then serve. If it's teaching, teach. Encourage, encouragement. Giving generously. Lead, then lead diligently. Mercy, then do it cheerfully. Amen? We're going to go fast, but guess what? We're going we're gonna to do what Holy Spirit says to do. So number one is prophesying. Remember, we're going all about the gifts of God's grace in your life. Amen. So when I go through these one through seven, hear me now, church. When I go through these one through seven, and we're going to have the word to back it up, the Holy Spirit in me. Say it with me, Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. Say it like you want something. Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. Teach me. Teach me. See, right there where you just confessed out of your mouth, you spoke the word of God. Hallelujah. The word of God then ignites with the spirit of God. And guess what? Right now at this very moment, you have ears to hear like you've never heard before. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Are you ready? Yes. Now the beauty is, is that, right, Sarge? You can come to church, sit through the whole service, and leave exactly the same. That's right. That's exactly right. And guess what? I'm not going to let you distract me anymore. Amen. See, many of you don't know as your pastor, I can see it on you. I can see Holy Spirit trying his best to get through your head, in your heart, but you chose. No. I'm begging you. I'm begging you. Something has to change, right, Amanda? Something has to change tonight. Amen. Are you with me? Something has to change. Listen, I'm not a brother that's going to come before you and act like, oh, everything's great, everything's dandy, let's just get through this. No. Glory to God, Lord Jesus Christ, paid this price so that we can live a life and a life in abundance. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Do you want to see abundance? Yes. <laughs> abundance. Get it? <laughs> you then, my son, be strong in the grace that is in, say his name. Hallelujah. And the thing you have heard me say in the presence of many witnesses and trust to reliable people who will also be qualified to teach others. Join with me in suffering like a good soldier of Christ Jesus. Amen? Amen. No one serving as a soldier gets entangled in civilian affairs. How many ex-soldiers we have here? I know Elder Howard's going. Right? As a soldier, the commanding officer tells you, right, Elder Howard, what to go do, and guess what? You go do it. Right, Sister Amy? You get your orders, you go do it. Now what if Joey comes up and goes, hey, don't go listen to that person. Come over here. I got this bully I need you to take care of. You think Elder Howard's going to say, well, yeah, let's go do what you want to do. No. He has orders. Say it with me, order. 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 But rather tries to please his commanding officer. Similarly, anyone who competes as an athlete does not receive the victor's crown except by competing according to the rules. Amen. Believe it or not, in Christianity, there are rules. Amen. Can I get an amen? amen. We, we are not a club, right? We are not an organization that, okay, we, can, we say Jesus and we can live a sinful life and we can do... No, that's not Christianity. Christianity is a follower of Lord Jesus Christ. Let me define a follower. A follower is a worshiper. Let me define a worshiper. A worshiper is just complete focus and thanksgiving to Lord Jesus Christ, awaiting the direction and voice of Holy Spirit and blessing the Heavenly Father. Amen? Amen. That's, that's who we are. Hallelujah. That's who we are. Now praise God. Now get this. Get this. Many people want that image. Many people want that image of being a godly person, a child of God. And God even warns us, there's many that are going to try to fool you, but by their fruit, you will know them. 
Amen. 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 How many of you got good smelling fruit tonight? Ooh. Hallelujah. It's all because of the Lord Jesus. I lift up everything. Right? How many of you got stinky fruit? Oh, okay. So you're telling me everybody in here got good smelling fruit. All right. So we got work to do. We got work to do. Listen, we're family. And this is where God comes to heal. But if, if no one's going to say they're sick, then guess what? There ain't no healing that's going to take place. Come on now. Come on now. But I know for a fact, I know for a fact that we have people in here that are hurting right now. Come on. Amen? Say it with me, rules. Rules. The hardworking farmer should be the first to receive a share of the crops. Reflect on what I am saying, for the Lord will give you insight. That was number one, is insight. Prophesy and prophesy. Insight. When you have this relationship with God Almighty, say his name, Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. In your worship life, Holy Spirit will show you the future. Let's just be bold. Let me just ask this. How many of you has God shown you the future thing? Show your hand. Raise it up high. Look around, church. Don't tell me that God doesn't. He's alive and he's in you. And as you worship him, the anointing of the Holy Spirit will come upon you. And as you bless Lord Jesus Christ, God will say, all right, this is about to happen. I need you to go step into that situation, minister to that person, because they're going down the wrong road. Let them know what's going to happen. Right? That's prophesying. Amen? Number two, say this with me, ministry. In ministry, it's all about serving. 2 Corinthians 5, verse 16 through 18. So from now on, we regard no one from a worldly point of view. This is deep now, family. For such a long period of time, Holy Spirit's been teaching us, do not judge, do not gossip, don't grumble. Right? Why? Because God has nothing to do with it. He detests it. He hates it. The Word of God says so many times. From the beginning to the end. Don't grumble, don't talk about nobody, don't be like that. Why? It's the enemy. It's the devil trying to work on your soul to build up the emotions to attack the spirit man. Right? We want the spirit man. You guys remember this past Sunday, right? We want that spirit man. Oh, right? Why? When the spirit man is healthy and you're worshiping God, Holy Spirit, right, puts this guard around you. Amen? How many of you want that? How many of you want like a shield around you? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We all want it, don't we? Why? Because the Lord Jesus paid for it. Amen? But I want to tell you, the way this shield is effective is through thanksgiving unto the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen? When you're thankful to the Lord Jesus, hallelujah, Holy Spirit will bless you. This is what hurts me about this Christmas season. So much negativity. So much stress over gifts and presents. Family. Mad at each other, they don't even know what they're mad about. You know, I've been called in a situation, girl. What are you guys arguing about? Well, <coughs> she did something to me years ago. <laughs> she, she did what? Hold on, let me think. You gotta think about it? You gotta think about it. See, some of you are in that boat right now. You gotta, you gotta think about what somebody did wrong rather than just saying, Jesus is Lord, I love you, come on. Amen. Huh? Amen. Jesus is Lord, come on, I love you. Amen. Amen. What is going on, family? I say this to you because guess what? Hallelujah, praise God. We ain't gonna make it out of this worship service. I gotta speak life. We're gonna get raptured out of here. Amen. And what happens when we're before the Lord? What happens? Come on, Brother Daniel. We are standing before Lord Jesus. And you're like, uh, mm, uh, um, they hurt my feelings. They hurt my feelings. That's why I didn't forgive them. And you know what's amazing is that Lord Jesus can just go like this, tell you to stop talking, and you're going to see heaven, the glory of heaven pierced through the, the nail that was placed in his hand. And you're going to look right at that hand and you're like, it wasn't worth it. It wasn't worth it. Listen, I know you've been done wrong. I've been done wrong. Right? But if we walk around insecure, if we walk around like we've been battered and bruised, there is no boldness in Christ. Amen. But what we got to do is walk around as children of God saying, you know what? I've been done wrong, but by the grace of God, I forgive.
gave me. And I'm not going to walk around like all fear right? Amen? Who we really got to go? Though we once regarded Christ in this way, the worldly point of view, that's what God is saying. We were all there. You guys are like, well, I'm not that old. But you were there. You were there when he uh, crucified him. That was you. Amen. You were there when they beat him. Guess what? That was me. I was the one spitting on his face. But we do so no longer. Therefore, Therefore if anyone is in Christ, the new creation, hallelujah, has come. The old has gone, the new is here. All this is from God who reconciled us to himself through Christ and gave us the ministry of, say with me, who this is our ministry. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Isn't this incredible? Yes. You can leave it up to a church to have all kinds of different ministries, can't you? Amen. Right? We can get ourselves exhausted. And guess what? The devil wants that. Amen. Be exhausted, do works, and just be crunchy about it. But the Bible says to do everything with a cheerful heart. Yes. Amen. Right? Which means, guess what? If you ain't cheerful about it, but you're faithful and you do it every Sunday, I don't care. You need to stop doing it. Amen. All I care about is your soul worshiping Lord Jesus. Amen? Amen. It ain't about the works because he did the perfect work. Amen. Hallelujah. Lord Jesus did the perfect work. Amen? Amen? So we have this ministry from God, this ministry called reconciliation. Say that again. Reconciliation. reconciliation. So how has Lord Jesus Christ charged you with the power of Holy Spirit? You are the one to take souls by the hand and say, let me show you something. My daddy loves you so much. Hold on, stand right there. He loves you. Amen. I know this world hates you. I know you've been drugged through the mud. But he died for you. Amen. This is reconciliation. Amen. Listen, when you bring a child to God, and you do your part to just tell them how much God loves them because of Lord Jesus Christ. Listen, that's, that's all you do. You can't save nobody. I can't save nobody. But I can be there for them. Right? I can be there at that groundbreaking moment when they want to they pray or cry out to Jesus. And guess what? They're only going to want to pray or cry out to Jesus to somebody who is a shining light. Amen. Amen? To somebody who has the anointing of God that's going to love on them. You think, you, you think I wouldn't want to cry on your shoulder if you look like him? Yeah. See, sis said, I wouldn't. If you look crunchy and mean, I ain't going to talk to you. I'll talk to somebody who's like this. Yeah. Bring it in, right? Amen. And isn't that our Lord? Yes. Yes. Right? Isn't that our Lord Jesus? Amen. Look at through all the stories. Hallelujah. Say it with the ministry. Amen. The God has reconciled the world to himself in Christ, not counting people's sins against them. Hallelujah. Can you get an amen? amen? Remember, you're not the judge. What someone is going through, they're going through. If someone's living a way that you don't agree with, that's their life. All God is asking you to do is worship him. Amen. Be happy. Bless him. Say it with me. Be happy. Yeah. Quit worrying about everybody else's business. Amen. Praise God. Worry about your own business. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. Amen. I pray that this is freeing to you. Some of you are getting crunchy and crunchy, and I can see what Holy Spirit is showing you. I can. I'm not going to pick on anybody. Yeah, I look at you like that. Yeah, I'm not going to pick on anybody. But guess what? If you choose to live that way, that is between you and God. Right? right? right. Am I being right? right? That's your decision. But don't you go dragging anybody else because you made the decision that Jesus Christ isn't good enough for you. Can I get an amen? amen. He has committed to us the message of reconciliation. Listen to this. Hallelujah. We are therefore... Christ's ambassadors. As though God were making his appeal through, wow. through us. Wow. Listen to the charge that you have over your life. It is no longer Joey just going to do his business. No. I am an ambassador for Christ. And where I go, God will orchestrate my steps 
If I am obedient. Amen. Say it with me. If I am obedient. If I am obedient. If you're disobedient, guess what? You're gonna you're gonna go down a road that you never meant to go down. And most Christians, because they're so religious and they know all the scripture, oh Lord, look at what you've done to me. Look at this. And God said, you're not focused on me. Right? You focus on all this worry and anxiety and garbage, right? Say with me, no more. No more. Oh, hallelujah. Do you mean it? Yes. No more. No more. Oh, I believe you. We implore you on Christ's behalf, be reconciled to God. God made him who had no sin to be sin for us, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Glory to God. Are you guys good? Everybody okay? Yeah. Praise God. Number three, teaching, instruct. John 14, 26. You all know this. We'll go fast. But the advocate, say his name. Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, that's in the name of Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. You call on the name of Lord Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus looks at you and says, yep, mine. Amen. Father God says, Holy Spirit, and guess what? For eternity, nobody can take that breath. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. For eternity, nobody can take that breath. Hallelujah. He will teach you all things and will remind you of everything I have said to you. Amen? Amen. Number four, encouraging. This is your purpose. Say it with me, purpose. Purpose. Therefore, if you have any encouragement in Christ, any comfort from his love, any fellowship with the Spirit, any affection and compassion, then make my joy complete by being like-minded, having the same love, being united in spirit and purpose. You know how much this blesses me? Don't that sound like us? Hallelujah. Amen. Can you give that a round of applause? Doesn't that sound like a round of applause? We are united in Christ as one body. We know that we do not grumble and complain or talk bad about anybody. We know that we do not judge. Hallelujah. Our happiness comes from the righteous one, the perfect one, that he took upon himself our identity. You see, when you died in Christ, he took your identity. Let's get this, let's just get this clear, okay? He took your identity. And when Holy Spirit breathed in you and rose you, born again, you have Christ's identity. Oh, hallelujah. Glory to God. Say with me, I am. A child of God. Beloved. So I'm going to ask you a question. You said I am. Are you healed? I am. Are you redeemed? I am. Are you victorious? I am. Are you a beloved child of God? I am. Number five is giving. Say that word with me, generous. Generous. I'm going to ask um, Brother Simon, since you're back there, if you don't mind taking the... Yeah, you know, if you don't mind, I'm taking the offering plates. Oh, Brother Mike, if you don't mind, can you get the offering plates and put up at the altar, please? If y'all don't want to do it, just say no, I'll do it myself. <laughs> don't be crunchy about it. <laughs> I asked Brother Mike to do it because of the fact that Holy Spirit said so, and I need to be obedient. Amen? Amen. Thank you, Brother Mike. Praise God. I go back to the other place. Well, pastor, pastor's already all over. <laughs> yeah, if you don't care, that's fine. The reason why Holy Spirit has put us in this new season on Sunday, for those of you who were here, if you weren't, I'm just going to let you know. Holy Spirit said, do not steal worship from me. Amen. Do not rob my worship. And right there, he put the fear of God in me. You guys know, right? You guys know that feeling. You have a bad thought towards somebody. Maybe somebody said something that hurt you. You got offended. Maybe somebody cut you in line. I don't know what happened, right? But that moment where you're like, Arr! And then God puts conviction on you, right? Mm -hmm. And then right there, when you're convicted, you're like, Lord, forgive me. Amen. Bless him, Lord. Amen. I'm sorry. Yes. Say that with me. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. It's, it's the hardest words to say. I don't know why. I don't know why. Say sorry and be done with it. Yes. Maybe some of you are in a fight right now that you, it's just been going on. And you're like, I ain't going to say that until they say that. You know what? Enough. Amen. God says you say sorry. Amen. Listen, I'm saying it right now. Holy Spirit's telling me to tell you. God says you say you're sorry. Amen. Get rid of it. Amen? Amen. Just say, look, I'm sorry. If they go, well, I love you. That's it. I love you. Right? But move on. God said don't steal worship from me. Why am I saying this to you as we put off 
offering plates up here? If God moves on your heart to bless God with an offering, do it. Elders, I want to apologize because the elders, elders fight. Listen, pray for them because they, they have a lot on their plate, making sure that God's house is run in order. Amen? But all this money goes to everything in this, in this church. But what God didn't want is for somebody who had an offering to give and they couldn't give it because they don't see an offering plate. Amen. So guess what? I'm not trying to tell you what to do. I'm just asking you to be obedient to the Lord. Amen. Amen. There's somebody right now that may have a $20 bill you want to put up there. I'm believing God for somebody to have $2 million to put in there. Amen. Amen. Gosh, can you imagine what we can do with $2 million? <laughs> Hallelujah. We have a youth center and everything. Amen. Amen. We're working on it. Yeah, we're working on that, praise God. Right. Hallelujah. It's already done in Jesus' name. We spoke the man into existence. Hallelujah. But I'm just being, listen, there's some of you right now that don't even have money. I know what that feels like. But you want to put something in. I said it Sunday, I'll say it again. Every time that we're up here, reach in your pocket. Act like you got a bunch of money. Come up here. Come up here with nothing but lint and say, here you go, Lord. God just wants to see your heart. Amen. Because getting up, hear my heart now, getting up, and just humbly, having nothing, Brother Sarge, having nothing. God knows you ain't got nothing in your pocket, but just getting up and going, I ain't got nothing, but I'm sure going to believe. Amen. Amen. I'm going to believe, Sister Man. And my God's so big that one day this is going to be a lot of money. Amen. But here, this is all I got. All I'm asking you to do is bless the Holy Spirit. Amen? amen. And again, amen. amen. Give and it will be given to you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over, will be poured into your lap. For with the measure you use, it will be measured to you. Now, I want to be correct when I, when I preach on this because the big thing here that God is talking about is forgiveness. Hallelujah. To forgive anybody who is wrong. But glory to God, there's such an order in God's house that when you give in any capacity, when you give compassion to it, when you give your time, listen, God knows that you're here tonight and you could be anywhere else. D does that not bless God? Amen. Amen. You know God's doing things right now in your family you're not even aware of as you sit here worshiping him right now? Can I get an amen? amen. Can, can I ask you something? How much can you pay God for God repairing a relationship that you have been believing for? How much can you pay God for saving your child from overdosing on drugs? How much can you pay God for, can we move on? I mean, really, right? Somebody in the sickness right now? Hallelujah, in Jesus' name, I'm believing the Holy Spirit broke that off of them in Jesus' name. And then why? Because you chose to worship. Say with me, worship. worship. Is he worthy? Yes. Yeah. That's the meaning of that word, worship. Is he worthy? Yes. Yeah. We worship because we know what Lord Jesus Christ did. Amen? Amen. We know what he did for us. Is he worthy? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Number six, leading. Guidance. We're almost done. <coughs> Hebrews 13, 6 through 8. So we say with confidence, the Lord is my helper. I will not be afraid. What can your mortals do to me? Remember your leaders who spoke the word of God to you. Consider the outcome of their way of life and imitate their faith. Amen? Amen. Who is our leader? Holy Spirit. That's right. Right? God is our leader. Lord Jesus Christ demonstrated it on this earth. Amen? And now Holy Spirit lives in each one of us. Why is it so important for you to know as a child of God that Holy Spirit lives in you? Holy Spirit is the one to make sure that you live a holy and blameless life. Which means if you've got garbage going on in your life right now, I don't know what kind of addiction, I don't know if you're looking at things you're not supposed to look at, I don't know if you're running with the crew you're not supposed to run with. I don't know. God does. Amen. He's moving on your heart to make changes. Right? Amen. And it's between you and God to make those changes. Yes. Because you can make the decision, no, I'm good. Yes. I got you, Lord Jesus. I know, Holy Spirit, you're talking to me. I know you're telling me that I shouldn't be this way, but I choose to be this way. I'm just throwing myself under the bus. I tried that in Christianity. 
I tried it. I tried to have the label as a Christian, right? Go to school after school, training after training, conference after conference, degree after degree. Get all the stripes. Am I preaching? Get all the stripes so that people go, oh, wow, you did that? Guess what? It's all garbage. Amen. It was all pride. It, it's everything that God hates. And by the grace of God, it had to come to the point in my life, Sister Sonia, where I said, I don't want it no more. I know where I'm headed. The only difference is I'm being a phony and I'm trying to label myself as a Christian and I'm really not a Christian. You know why? Because it's all about juggling. That's garbage. And praise God when it comes to the point where I just said, I don't want it no more. Guess what, Brother Clay, just like you, I'd hit my face, cry out to God, and tell God, I'm being serious. I don't want it anymore. And I remember just like it was yesterday, Brother Clay, Holy Spirit come upon me. And I felt God's presence like never before, just like you're feeling right now. God's showing it to me, brother. And I said, I want to be obedient. I'm going to stop messing around with these people that act like they're my friend and they're not my friend. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to worship you. I'm going to serve you, Father, because I know you've got a calling on my life. I know that you are going to see my step. And I'm not going to step out anymore. Amen? I'm not going to step out anymore. Hallelujah. God is crucifying yourself. If your life is about you, listen, take it from a brother that's been down that road and the devil tried to kill me. Many times. It is going to lead to a dead end. But if you're comfortable, if you're comfortable, if you're comfortable and acting Christian, but living a different life, I'm going to tell you right now, you are a serious wolf. Yes. You are lukewarm and God's going to spew you out. Yes, I speak this word to our church. Why? Because I love you. Amen. I'm your pastor and I have to be accountable. Amen. If you think you can act one way and, act and live a life another way, there is something demonically wrong with you. And guess what? The anointing Holy Spirit's here for us to lay hands on you and for you to repent. Say the word with me. Repent. repent. And you need to kill that thing. Amen. You need to kill that thing. Hallelujah. Amen. And allow Holy Spirit to bless you. Amen. Amen. Stand up and stretch a minute. God said when you stand up, there's, there's chains that are going to be broken off you that you don't even know. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. There's an anointing. It's all Holy Spirit's presence. Amen. Amen. I can see it. You stood up, many of you got bright. Amen? Oh, yeah. Some of you just need to keep going like that. You know? Like a papa weasel, you know? <laughs> Hallelujah. You may be seated. Praise God. Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Can you hear an amen? Amen. amen. Last one, cheerleading mercy. Praise God. Therefore, Therefore. as God's chosen people, holy and dearly beloved, clothe yourself with compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. Can you get an amen? Amen. I love, it when the, I love it when the scripture says, clothe yourself, right? How many of you, when you get up in the morning, you got you to gotta dress yourself? Yeah. <laughs> Most of us in here, right? <laughs> Let me ask you something. <laughs> what I love about this, clothe yourself, God is saying, this is on you. Amen? Say with me, this is on me. God is saying, clothe yourself. This means you do it. Right? You put on your bridges, right? Right? I mean, let's be real, right? We're going to be grown up here, right? Clothe yourself. Amen? And this is what he tells you to put. Say a word with me, mercy. Mercy. So these are the seven pieces of armor I want to talk about. Many of you right now already caught on to that. Because we already talked about the seven graces. I want to talk about the seven pieces of armor. Many of you are grounded in the word. I know many of you are. Many of you know the Bible better than I do. There's only six pieces of armor. There's only six pieces. But there's a last one that is a surprise that Holy Spirit wants to bless us with. Can you get an amen? Amen. amen. Listen, Holy Spirit's a teacher. I'm a worshiper just like you. Hallelujah. You can feel his presence flowing. Amen. I'm asking you, bless God. Say with me, bless God. Bless God. So we discussed this in detail, and we're going to keep on discussing it. Fight means focus and giving them thanks. Right? Say with me, focus. Focus. 
this. You know what? God loves us. Hallelujah. We were fooled this whole yes. time. Yes. And Jesus died for us. Hallelujah. And this is the ministry of reconciliation. Say breastplate. breastplate. This is the breastplate of righteousness. It's not your righteousness. Amen. And again, amen. amen. Ain't none of us righteous. He is the one righteous. Amen. amen. And it's because he's the one righteous, amen. we can look at people as righteousness of God. Amen. amen. Oh, hallelujah. Number three, feet planted. This is the gospel of peace. And this is the teaching and instruct. Teaching and instruct. Remember, Holy Spirit is the one who teaches. It's not Daniel, Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit is the one who teaches. See, many people think that I'm teaching as I'm up here. I'm not, I'm just worshiping like you. Amen. Thanking God for Lord Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit will be, hallelujah, the one to teach, amen? So when your feet is, oh, praise God, are you listening? Huh? Are you listening? Wake up, church. If you need to stand up, stand up. Don't go to sleep on me because you're becoming a distraction. <laughs> Belt of truth. Amen. Amen. Breastplate. Amen. Feet planted. Amen. Amen. Feet planted. Don't you like that? Amen. When your feet is planted, you know because you worship. You know where you're at with God. And that's how Holy Spirit will teach. Number four, shield. shield. Say it with me, shield. Shield. And this is the encouragement and this is the purpose. 2 Corinthians 4.13 talks about the spirit of faith being the shield. That you use what is in your heart to speak life. God. You know there's many Christians walking around with no shield. Yeah. And God has called you to bless them and to put your shield around them. What am I talking about? You hear people all the time say, oh my goodness, I've just been so sick. No, you haven't. Come on here, let me pray for you. Let me pray for you. Oh, I've just been dealing with this anxiety. Guess what? No more. No more. Don't be one of those Christians going, oh, really? You know what? That sounds really bad. I don't know what you're going to do. Guess what? That doesn't bless Holy Spirit, right? But when you're a child of God and you hear somebody talk death like that, immediately your shield goes up. You're like, no, you're not sick. Well, you just don't know. I don't know. But you know what? I'm going to pray for you. And I'm going to believe in Jesus' name that you are healed by his Christ. Amen. You know why? Because he healed me. He'll heal you. Amen. You know why? God loves you just as much as he loves me. Amen. Amen. That is using your shield. Amen. Number five, helmet. The helmet is our salvation. And when you have your helmet on and you know your salvation and you have the joy of your salvation because you know what God did through Christ and you know that Holy Spirit lives in and through you, you know that you are going to be generous. Amen. Right? Generous. Say it with me. Generous. Generous. You know why? Because you understand what God gave to purchase you. Amen. You know what God gave to purchase you. Can I say that again? Amen. You know the price. You know the cost. Why? Because you're saved and you know what God did and what he gave up to purchase you. Amen. So there is no question about you wanting to give generously. Why? Because you have that helmet on. And number six, obedience. In obedience to the word of God is leading and guiding. And this is number seven. And all it does is just backs up what we discuss. Having obedience in all this is cheerleading and being merciful to God's people. You see, this world doesn't need another Christian judging everybody. That's right. This world doesn't need another Christian talking about, look at all your sins and look what you're doing wrong. Guess what? They already know. They already know. All God wants and expects from you is complete worship. Amen? If we get in the habit of judging people, guess what it does? It steals. It destroys our worship because the enemy comes in. Amen. And we are not going to allow that in Open Arms Community Church. Amen. Listen, I want to be bold and speak for all the churches. Amen? But by the grace and mercy of God, this, this is where we're planted. Amen? Amen. Y'all can stand up with me. Praise God. So in all this, you guys saw how everything coincides with one another. How everything, how everything is in God's divine order. 
Listen, I didn't change nothing. I didn't change nothing how the Bible listed everything. I didn't. We just listed everything out and we showed the importance to know your identity. We showed the importance to know your righteousness is in his righteousness. We showed the importance to know your feet needs to be planted in God's house. Listen, last time I checked, the only way a tree can grow up to be a tree, you got to leave it there and let it be planted. Amen. 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 If you keep digging that thing up and moving it, guess what? It has a chance to die. You might cut a root and then guess what? It's going to die. And God says, just be planted. Amen. Shield, the shield of faith. Hallelujah. The shield of faith. How are we speaking as a church? Amen. How are we believing? How are we speaking? The helmet of salvation. Are you saved? Do you know? Huh? Do you know for sure? Amen. Huh? Do you know for sure? Amen. Huh? You take the last breath, you're gonna go, you're gonna go to heaven? Amen. 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 Do you know for sure? Let's say for sure. For sure. Do you know for sure? For sure. I'm just I'm just being a real old. <laughs> God is so funny. <laughs> and then the sword. Hallelujah. The sword of the spirit. The sword of the spirit. Leads and guides us. Amen. Amen. Say, call his name the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. Say with the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. Lead me. Lead me. And number seven, like I told you, this is the missing piece of the armor. Obedience. Amen. You can have all the armor on. You can be decked out. But guess what? When the battle comes, you can turn around and run away. There ain't nothing protecting your back. Amen. God wants you to charge. Amen. Amen? God wants you to take a stand in the gospel. Amen? Amen? Who is your Savior? Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Hallelujah. So if the Holy Spirit calls on you, leaders, I'm going to ask you guys to come. Pastor, I'm going to ask you guys to come up front. I believe if you need prayer, listen. Our leaders are coming up here. First and foremost, what you need to know. The reason why they come up here first is because they're just... Laying it all down at the altar. Amen. We're all human, right? Amen. Amen. We all go through things, right? Amen. But by the grace of God, these pastors up here, they're putting everything at the altar. And they're asking God for an anointing so that if God orchestrates your steps to call upon them, please go up to them and say, I need prayer. Amen. If you just want to be intimate with God, come to this altar. Amen? Amen. Well, I'm going to ask you, I'm going to challenge you. Will you approach God's altar tonight? As if it was your first time. Amen. Two people. Will you approach God's altar tonight as if this was your first time? Amen. Hallelujah. Well, let's do that. Amen. Praise God. God bless you guys.